Hi, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Tim. Uh, thanks for attending tonight's webinar on digital wellness and vision. Uh, it's a great privilege to be speaking to you guys, and thanks for taking your time uh, to even listen in and, and, to, and to take time to really take care of your eyes. Uh, what I hope to achieve at the end of the talk is to be able to empower you with some useful tips to, to take care of your vision and your eyes in this uh, digital era. You know, with the COVID situation, no, let's not talk about it right now. We have heard enough news. And uh, we just want to move on from there. And uh, what, what I would like, I'd like you to stay, stay to the end. And uh, I hope I'll be able to add value to you. And uh, hopefully at the end of the whole presentation, you can take on something, share it with your kids, um, be able to implement on it uh, every single day. And... To, to be able to do something and get some, some, some value out of it. So a bit about myself, my name is Ken Tong. Uh, I'm an optometrist. I'm the founder of my company, it's called eyesight.sg. I'm volunteering myself as, uh, in the association as a breast president of the Singapore Optometric Association. Um, I'm also doing some advisory panel for um, National Myopia Prevention Program, and that's a project under HPV and also for clinical optometry community screening. Uh, that's a project run by a Ministry of Health to see how we can uh, bring on primary eye care to more people. Um, today's discussion is really just straight to the point. I want to dive right in. Um, it's on the importance of vision, um, how digital device work and vision is correlated, some of the action steps and some of the real advice. I want questions to be pouring in. I'll, I'll take time to, to answer some of the questions that you have. Please ask me as many questions as possible. I hope you know I can I can bring forth some uh, good values and insights. And um, yep, let's go. So I would like to start this talk by by discussing what is vision to you. You know, vision is easily the most important asset in our life, but yet it's it's often you know um, we often neglect it. You know, if you, if you ask me, I think vision is the most important asset because you can take away my computer right now, right? You can take away my phone, my, all the technology that I have, my possessions, anything, right? But don't take away my vision. Because, you know, I, I cannot imagine walking around the room. Can you just imagine closing your eyes and just walking around out of, out of the room that you are in? Can you imagine how difficult it is that? And... Our technology, think about it, is, is built upon our society. It's built upon good vision. And we, we know that 78% 70, 70 of the information comes from our sight. And it's something that, that everybody can't do without. So you can take away everything, but don't take away my vision. And I want to ask you this question. How, many, how much emphasis has been put away, has been put on vision itself? And, and this is something I really want you to, to start thinking about. You know, what is vision to you? And um, we, we shouldn't neglect it. So if vision is so important, who is going to take care of it? There are, I want to introduce you three professions. One is the optician. Um, they are the experts in fitting, grinding, and dispensing the glasses and spectacles for you. So the first O is the one that's going to take care of the vision. The second O is the ophthalmologist, the guys who finish eight years of medical school and five years specializing just in eye to take care of things like cataract removal, surgery, LASIK. So they are the experts in the eye. So they are the eye surgeons, they call it. Then, of course, that's me. You know, I'm an optometrist. I'm the vision person to go to. So as an optometrist, if you want to look at um, eye conditions such as glaucoma, macular degeneration, diabetic retinopathy. So these are the, this is the first line. Uh, these are the common eye conditions that can be diagnosed by an optometrist first. So we are like the first line of defense uh, for any triaging of all these eye conditions. And if there's anything wrong, so we call ourselves the primary eye care provider. Primary eye care provider. So we are at the first line where we diagnose and then we work on the secondary investigative, investigative test. And then finally to tertiary. Tertiary again will be treatment. You know, that's when we send to the doctors, right? And of course, if you just want to get contact lenses, you have to visit an optometrist as well. I would like to first state about the, the, the goodness about, about digital device, right? You know, this Zoom meeting is, is made possible by digital device. You know, it, it has helped with productivity. We are, we are learning from here, right? I want to acknowledge the good about the digital device because the, the latest slides I'm going to share with you some of the reasons why we are so 
hooked on it, right? And some of the bad things, but I want to acknowledge that there are the good about the digital device to begin with. So I want you to be, I want you to, to bring back to the to the history of mankind, right? Um, the reason why I put up this slide is because you know, human, you no, know, we are not made to do mere work, right? We are not made to do reading, we're not made to look at our phone or this well. 200,000 years ago, we were hunter gatherers, right? We heard, we do, and it's only through the industrial revolution, right? And the digital revolution right now that we need to accustom. You see, the, the human eye is never used to look at anything near. So even looking at Dr. Carl, he's one of the uh, earlier, you know, very famous ophthalmologists, right? He, he talks about embroidery vision syndrome. So back in, eight, back in, the, in the 19th century where embroidery is, uh, is a thing for production of things, um, they re he realized that a lot of people, when they do too much of the embroidery stuff, which is something that it demands very close distance, these workers, these production line people, they are very, very tired at the end of the day. So the, 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 the big word there, astenophia, it means eye fatigue. So what about now? You know, we, we have great statistics later on. I'm going to share with you, right? On, on how much time do we actually spend on near work? And I also want to bring you this timeline. This is something so new. I only saw this slide like two days ago. I didn't even have time to edit it, but I want to put it in to, to show you how important it is to start realizing something called digital vision syndrome. And, and I'm, I was happy because, you know, in, in my years of practice, I've really realized that, you know, the very fact that we are using our mobile devices all this while, and of course, with all this uh, circuit breaker things coming along, we're, we're going to spend a lot of our time on phone, on our iPads, on our laptop. So, so what can we do? And, and in the year 2018, it's already been clinically labeled that there's this condition called trigeminal dysphoria. So it's about the same thing, right? And it's not something that has been created. And, and it's real, um, something that our eyes cannot take for more than two hours. It results in neck, sh shoulders, back pain, neck pain, eye strain, headaches, you know, blurred vision and dry eyes. If you're feeling any of those, probably you are, you are also you know, um, suffering from some form of, of di digital vision syndrome. And of course, the medical term to it is the trigeminal dysphoria. This is something so new, uh, but the symptoms are the same. So I want to bring across three important points. One is on the progression of myopia, both for adults and children. I want to talk about the blue light emission, you know, this artificial blue light from the screen. Is it good? Is it bad? What's so good or so bad about it? And the addiction, the relationship we have with our digital device. So let, let us talk about myopia first, something that I'm, I'm very, very passionate about, something that I really want to solve in, 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 in Singapore. So wow, look at this picture. What do we see? You know, we, we, we have you know, a lot of children. Um, this, is, this is a picture from Korea, and uh, it's, it's just a bunch of spectacles. At least that's what one of my live audiences said. Um, it's not just, just about spectacles. I'm talking about students. So just to give you some statistics, right? Um, 65% um, of the 12-year-old, I repeat, 65% of the 12-year-old in Singapore, P6 students, need glasses due to myopia. And when you reach tertiary and polytechnic level, it's easily 80%, right? Imagine 10, 8 of them need glasses due to myopia. And what's the big deal about myopia? So let me just go, into, I'm just going to run through some physics behind myopia. So it's, it's really about, you know, when, when light, right, runs, when light shines through our eye, it has to hit the retina that line, the focal plane, the back part of the eye for us to be able to see clearly. This is how we perceive vision. But when we have myopia, we say it's short-sighted, right? When we talk about short-sighted means it's near-sighted. That's another word for it. Near-sighted means you can see near but not far. You can see near but not far. Jingshu, right? Short-sighted. So we also say that the eyeball is too long. So you, you saw that word, the line at the back, at the bottom, eyeball too long. What do I mean by that? I want you to recall your primary school friend, right? I'm very sure there's someone in your class back in school where he's got like a very, very thick glasses. He's got like a thousand degree, 800 degree kind of a thing. So you may wonder, eh, how come this fella needs such a thick lens? 
It's probably because the eyeball has become so long, right? They need a very thick lens to bend the light all the way to the back. All right, so when we say you're short-sighted, we say that your eyeball is too long. When you're short-sighted, your eyeball is too long. This is a very important uh, concept to grasp. All right, and in Singapore, we try to be number one in everything, right? <laughs> we try to be number one, to be the best um, um, airport. We want to be the best passport. You know, you want to be the most expensive city to live in. But, but in myopia, you know, I don't know why, but we also strive to be number one. Uh, in the year 2050, okay, um, it's, it's going to be a huge problem. Uh, what, what myopia is going to be? 77%, okay, imagine. 77% of the Singapore population will be myopic, right? And 49% is HM. HM is, is, is defined as 500 degrees and above. High myopia. High myopia HM is defined as 500 degrees and above. And half of the population in Singapore, 2050 will be that. So what, why, why is the reason? What is the reason um, for, for this kind of rapid progression in myopia? And why is it Singapore? There are a few reasons. One is Asian ethnicity. I think Chinese particular, you know, we are, we are very prone to have myopia. Uh, that's in the genes. Parental genes play a part. So if daddy, mommy has got uh, myopia, chances are the child will also be myopia. So um, near work, you know, we, this is what the topic is about. You know, the fact that we are reading everything up close, it's going to drive up myopia. Think of your primary school friends who are very scholarly. They probably read a lot of books, thick books that they have. You know, they are, they are likely to be very high myopic as well. Uh, we also talk about the number of hours you spend outdoors, right? The number of hours you spend outdoors. All these things can lead up to the progression of myopia. So, wait a minute, Ken. Just now you mentioned that, you know, your eyeball is longer. So, what is significant? The thing is this. A lot of people think that once you have myopia, all you need to do is just wear a pair of glasses. But the attention that I want to drive to the punchline is this next slide. I want you to pay attention. Because what I'm trying to say is that myopia isn't just about wearing a pair of glasses, but it's actually an elongation of your eye. An elongation, and what can this cause by? Near work, digital device, right? And it's so dangerous because this slide here, all right, I want you to take about 10 seconds to digest that. So if you're degree if your power is is minus six and above right the chances of you having cataract cataract is where the top the, the front part of the eye we have a transparent lens right because of uv it becomes cloudy it, everybody will get cataract once if they live up to 120 years so what i'm trying to say is it's an oxidation process five times glaucoma where the side region is gone is an irreversible eye condition due to the damage to the nerve the optic nerve pressure of the eye very high hereditary level. If parents got glaucoma, you need to go for an eye, a comprehensive eye test, 14 times. Retinal detachment, right? Think of it as a wallpaper coming down from the wall, right? If you have retinal detachment, you see a lot of bloaters. Why? Again, because when the eyeball becomes longer, because your degree is, is very high, you've got very high myopia, your eyeball is stretched, the retinal gets thinner. When the retina is thinner and you go for bungee jumping, you go for a roller coaster ride, you go for uh, scuba diving, you fly frequently. All these activities that I just mentioned, they, they have a very rapid atmospheric pressure change and this can cause the retina to detach. 22 times, look at that, right? Are, are you, is this, is this of, of, of something that you should be worried about? And macular degeneration, the very fact that, again, the retina is thinner, a lot of a lot of, a lot of things can happen when your eyeball is longer 41 times. You get my point, right? So if myopia is such a big issue, all right, we, as optometrists, remember I said that we can do contact lenses. So if you want to go to an optician, you cannot purchase contact lens from an optician. You have to visit optometrists because we are the eye health people. We need to make sure that the cornea is good. So for kids, you know, we have something called OTHO-K where it's a, re, it's a corneal reshaping therapy. Basically, what the, what the kids do is that they put on this contact lens to sleep. It's a hard lens. It's like a cornea mold. It's an eye mold, M-O-L-D. It changes the shape of the cornea. And when they wake up in the morning, they get good vision overnight. They don't have to wear glasses, but there are risks involved. I have to say it up front. And of course, these are the things that we do to, to help children with not just about correction, 
but also about control. This is what myopia management is about. And you have to really look at the myopia control today because if not, you have to risk poor vision tomorrow. And the, and the reason why, again, this will come in for children as of now, I'm going to talk about adults later on, is that, you know, children at their, as they are growing up, right, in their growth spur from 7 to 16, the chances of them, you know, as they grow taller, their eyeball can get longer. It's just part of growing up. And, and at children, at, when they are 7 to 16, this is a time where you really want to control because what you want them is to not to look at the picture on the right where, where the high myopia issues can cause more risk to, to different eye conditions. So this is something that is important to look out for if you're a parent and if your children have got myopia. This is something you need to look out for. But for adults, what has computer, what has digital device got to do? I want to introduce you this term called pseudo-myopia. Anything that's pseudo is, is fake, it's not real. All right? When we talk about pseudo-myopia, I want you to imagine your friend. Okay, let's, let's say, I, let's talk about a case where uh, we, we see an a 18-year-old girl called Clara, right? Um, so Clara um, studied really hard. Um, and at 18 years old, she's already got a minus 400 degree, minus 4 diopter. So when eight, at 18 years old, she finished her, her JC, she went on to university. So from 18 to 22, four years, right? She did an honours program. She, fly, she passed with flying colours. So from, in the four years, in, during the uh, university days, her degree shot up from 400 to 600. Wow, that is quite scary. But if you remember what I said earlier, you know, myopia is caused by the elongation of the eye. This 200 increment that Clara has during her university days can be caused by pseudomyopia. So what is pseudomyopia? It's a contraction of your muscles because of the very fact that you have to get very close you know, to your device, you're reading like that, you're, you're lying down on your phone with your bed, you know, remove the glasses, you go, go really close, you're turning off the lights, bad reading habits. So that contraction of the muscles can cause the increment of the 200 degree. So what I'm trying to say is Clara's 200 degree increment is not because the eyeball actually grew longer. It could be, but chances are because she's already, already a young adult, it, it is a pseudomyopia. So what is the remedy? So after she finished her degree, 22 years old, four years, degree went up to 600, all you need to do is to ask her to go to Maldives, Maldives for six months, all right? No phone, no computer, no reading of books, right? No, nothing near work. Look at the sea every day. Her, her degree might probably drop from 600 to 400 again. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? It's not about the lengthening of the eyeball, but it's because of the sheer contraction and the tightening of the eye muscles. Why? Again, your phone, right? The digital device. So that is pseudomyopia. So how can we treat that? I want you to stay to the end of the talk for me to talk about it. So we talk about myopia in children and working adults. So what is it about blue light? You hear a lot of buzzwords about blue light, about digital eye strain. So how true is that? So let me debunk some of the myths here. So this is on blue light. This is on digital eye strain. Let me just run through very quickly. You know, I don't want to sound like a physics teacher at 8.45. It's going to be an uphill task. So I'm going to quickly run through. So in, in science, in, in physics, uh, without being too, you know, de detailed, um, there, are, there are rays, right? There are waves. There, there's a gamma ray, there's an X-ray, which are the high energy lights that can be really harmful. And then there's that radio wave, which is just everywhere right now. So in the middle of this visible light spectrum where you can see the different colors of the rainbow, all right, there's this visible light spectrum. So the reason why every time you turn on your blue light function on your phone, do you know that your phone has got this blue light function? If you are using an iPhone, it's called night shift function, right? For me, what I do is I turn it on into a schedule mode. So every time it reaches 7 p.m., it automatically turns on this night shift function. So things become more warm. It becomes more yellow. So if you look at the visible light spectrum over there, so basically you see that the blue is taken out. And then what is left over is actually the yellow and the red light. It, things become more warm. You know, those glasses that you put on, things will become yellow if you, if you opt for a blue light protection. It's the reason we, behind that is because blue light has been taken away and, and things become more warm. What, what is my advice? My advice is always turn on the blue light filter. If you're using Android, if there's no night shift function, 
Don't be disheartened. It usually comes with the newer Samsung or your Android sets. Just look for the blue light filter. Right? If you don't have it still, go to Play Store. You can download it. Basically, once you turn it on, things become warmer. Voila, you know you have it on. So what is this? What is it about this blue light um, problem that, that is going to be have? I, I want to share some, some real truth behind this. Um, you know, blue light they have they have about two different um, kinds. They they got the they got the it's just like cholesterol, right? There's a harmful cholesterol and the good cholesterol, the LDL and the HDL. So just like blue light, right? The harmful blue light, all right, causes two things. Number one, it causes our eye because of all these artificial lights. Even right now, when I'm looking at my laptop, like light is literally just coming into my eyes. Especially if I were to turn off my if I were to turn off all my lights, you know, my pupil becomes bigger, right? When it's nighttime, the pupils dilate. There's a lot of blue light coming in. So it can, it does cause this digital eye strain. And by turning on this blue light filter, or if you have those digital glasses, um, computer glasses, what they do is they take out this harmful blue light that it can cause the eye fatigue, all right? So what another thing about blue light they found in research is that it has been found that overexposure, even though the evidence is quite weak, I know even myself, I don't think it's, 100% true, they say that it has been found to have caused some kind of macular degeneration. Even though the evidence is weak, right? It is on papers, you know, it's quite 50-50. I would still think that it can cause, because it's artificially coming from any backlit device, I still feel that it should, we should just, because there are papers that say that it does cause some degeneration at the macula. Macula, again, is the back part of the eye. So these are the harmful aspects. What about the good part of the blue light? The good beneficial blue light actually helps with the circadian rhythm, all right, the, the sleep cycle. So that is why we can't, we can't use our phone before we sleep. Why? Because when you watch on Netflix again, night, night time, all light switch off, dilated pupils, go close, wow, you know, the light, the blue light literally just are blazing into your eye. And it causes, it tells your brain that, hey, it's still daytime, it's still daytime, right? And that's why you can't sleep. And by the time you realize that, whoa, it's 2 a.m. already, you know, I've been watching too much of my Netflix. And, and these are the things that can be happening. So what is what blue light is? And this prolonged muscle strain is the sheer amount. I'm, when I talk about six and a half hours average Singaporean, I'm literally include your two months old toddler and your 93 years old uncle, right? Two months old, 93 year old uncle, Everybody in Singapore, they use six and a half hours of internet. This is what I mean by average Singaporean. This is so much of screen time, if you ask me. And this can cause a lot of the issue. And another problem that we see a lot as an optometrist is dry eye symptoms, right? People are just not, you know, if I were to look at the screen, if I concentrate and focus, I don't blink as much, right? I don't blink as much. So, we, we need to put on more preservative eye drops. You know, we, we have a lot of dry eyes problems because we, we are focusing on your boss asks you, oh, you know, finish your report by 5 p.m. You know, you have to struggle to complete it. So these are the things that can cause, um, these are the issues that can, that can cause with digital eye, uh, digital eye strain. And, and the fact, again, is because of our, div our digital device again. So have you ever wondered why it's so difficult, all right, to... Um, fight all these digital devices. My, my wife is dancing in front of me. She's just causing a lot of nuisance. Um, so it, it, the reason why uh, we have all these issues is because we have to fight the much cleverer engineers behind the screen. All right. Uh, uh, this, these, are, these are research and findings that I know. And, and I'm, I'm guilty, right? I'm guilty. Because what I, what I want to share is this thing called the attention economy. Now, we've heard about the food economy, right? The big food economy. We've heard about the big tobacco economy. We heard about the big oil economy, right? All this economy, when I talk about this oil, we talk about food, we talk about uh, pharmaceutical, all this economy are worth trillions of dollars. And attention is the new currency. Why I say that, you know, it, 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 now I've read an article in my research, right? It says that in Japan, do you know that if you want to if you, if, you, if you go to a vending machine, there's this particular vending machine, they do want your money. So if you want to get a can of Coke, right? So all you need to do is to just watch there, 
for a minute and after you watch your the, the advertisement on the screen the coke automatically dispense right so they don't want to earn that 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 60 cents right because maybe it's a dollar 40 cents is the cost there's some 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 bills need to pay but you see the, the vending machine company they don't want to earn that 50 60 cents of margin they want your attention because your attention is worth that dollar do you know what i mean but that's that's in japan because in singapore you know immediately my thought is you know this one singapore double a cannot you know why because what is going to happen is that there are going to be this auntie who's going to sit down there and press all the machine and watch all the advertisements she's probably going to whistle away and then at the side of the vending machine she's just going to squat down there and sell you that one dollar can again right this is not going to implement in singapore this is not going to work because singapore lang ping kiang liao, right you are too smart so but, but this is this is so funny and and, and when i when i thought about it i said hey look you know we, we they want us to be addicted they want us to have this this um um, addiction and, and let me go through some of the scary things that I saw and I want to share with you. Do you know that it takes about 70% of the people only need 6 seconds to open an email. Why? Push notification. We have push notification. Okay? And do you know, right, when I saw this, I was like, whoa, blown away. If you spend 25 minutes per day on a single app, Facebook, you know, I play games with my children, 2 hours of your life is gone. Can you believe that? It's so scary. You know, I, I make it seem like, you know, the, the computer hung on me. But when I saw that, I was like, whoa, okay. I, I, I deleted my, my game app immediately after I saw these stats. Do you know that average Singaporeans spend about almost 13 hours on their digital device every day? And, you know, most of the time when we have a conversation, 87% of the people, now it's, it's not too bad because we are more conscious of the fact that we shouldn't look at our phone. Even I myself, I made it the point that I put my phone in my pocket. I don't even let it be on the, on the table. I'm very, very mindful right now. And I think a lot of the teachers, they also agree that a lot of teenagers, because of the social acceptance, the social proof, right? The, these are the things that is, that's happening. And a lot of the teachers, they agree, right? I, I saw this post, it was crazy. Um, about one and a half years ago, a Malaysian, a Malaysian teenager, she, she put on, on, on Instagram or a pool, right? Like dead or alive, or she put like D or a or something like that and a lot of people and a lot of people voted d you know what she did she she, she jumped down her building she jumped down from from her from her from her house and, and committed suicide just from a single pool but of course we know that they are they are they are conditioning and and, and some stress that she's going through but you know such kind of uh, emotional needs are, are terrible and and again it's because of the social acceptance the hollywood kind of what all these things is about and and the amount of people touching their phone is 2,617 times a day and that includes all the typing, right? And when I saw this stat, it's crazy. Um, again, why are we addicted? Why are we always fixated on our phone? We talk about the attention that they want you to have. It's the app engineers. They really want you to cling on to the app. You know, the, the, the new buzzword is they are the tobacco farmers in t-shirts, right? Because, you know, those geek people, they, the tech people, they always like to, to wear a t-shirt with their brand name there. So, they are the new tobacco farmers. They are the one that's going to cause us to, to be addicted. So, again, uh, attention economy is the big economy now. Uh, big attention economy is a seven trillion affair. Um, and Singapore, they spend a lot of money on, on advertisement. So, are, are we addicted? This list, I'm going to run down. Unequally guilty right so let's admit to it all right um does it sound familiar if you if you reach out your phone on the first thing in the morning and when you wake up pa, 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 the first phone is something that you, you you reach out for you know it shows that you are probably addicted right that's me do you use your phone when you're bored like who doesn't you know you sit on the escalator you wait for a train okay you increase cell phone use you get agitated when the phone is out of sight that's really what um i feel sometimes my, my wife like what is so key you know where's my phone where's my phone you know every time right and you complain about cell phone use right you know sometimes when we complain it's actually something that we, we hate deep down inside you know you know the kind of me social mirror thing that we like to complain but actually that's what we hear and we, we complain about you know our children using our phone but we are never the, the, the exemplary, we don't have the exemplary behavior. And, and, and yet, you know, we complain, we increase use phone and uh, the cell phone use, but we are always unable to cut down. So if you hit maybe about three to four of this list, yeah, yeah I, that's me, that's me. I admit to it, but I, I think we need to have the ownership of the issue first. 
we need to own the problem. Then we can we can take take take, take back and and the reason why is because you see these these people, the app engineers, they are they are there to take your attention. They they want to gamify. They want to incentivize. They want to hack your mind. They want to it's a it's a neural hack, right? They they bank on on subconscious human nature kind of a behavior. And I want to take a quick look. You know, everybody knows here, if you like huo guo, you like hot pot, right? This is Hai Ti Lao, right? And, and we love, we love Hai Ti Lao. Why? Because it takes care of the emotional side of things. You know, when you go there, they push out a baby pram. If you have a baby, they give you handphone charger, they give you everything, right? Just to make sure that you are, uh, we, and we pay premium just to go for something that is, that is, you know, can, you, can, you can find it like 30-40% cheaper mm. at, at Boogies, but yet we spend so much money. It's because of the, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of emotional fulfillment. It's, and when we use our phone, I want to talk about dopamine, right? Every time we share um, and, and our comments, be like, even myself, when I, when I post this webinar, you know, I, I, was, I was quite, you know, um, worried about, 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 you know, whether the, the webinar has got attendance, whether people are going to come. So, so we want that kind of dopamine hit because when we have, you know, when we see that our comments are being liked, uh, they, are, they are comments, our pictures are being shared, our article is being read, we, we, we feel good, right? It's because every time our friends like our photo is being shared or if you are a big Twitter user, your comments got retweet, you get a dopamine hit. And, and it becomes scary because every time somebody likes you, this becomes almost like gambling. It becomes like drugs. It becomes like secret. You know why? Because this intermittent response, which is I'm going to share with you right now. So this intermittent reinforcement allows people and, and they want people to crave that like, you know, you keep checking that phone if you, to see whether somebody emailed you, somebody WhatsApp you, because, you know, without you knowing, every time somebody messages you, Ah, there's that little spike of dopamine. And this dopamine is the reason why people smoke. This is the reason why people gamble, right? Because when you play games and when you gamble, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, right? But because sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, we get addicted. That's how it is. Like, there's a very good um, uh, science experiment. They talk about pigeons and rats, you know. Um, they, they pack on this button where there are treats out. But if you, if, you, if you hack this button whereby if they pack on it, right, they talk about pigeon, right, they pack. Sometimes the food comes out. Sometimes when they pack, the food doesn't come out. You know what they do? They keep packing non-stop. Even though they are really tired, they keep packing because they get addicted to that, you know, and they want to keep craving for that food and the dopamine. So this is the same region, right, when we look at our phone. And there's so much uh, psychological vulnerability. I don't have time to explain one by one, right? But basically, these are the, these are the things that's really going on. Um, and I want you to take a look at it. FOMO, the fear of missing out, right? When somebody asks you things, you know, and, and, and you don't want to lose out. So now they are talking about JOMO, the joy of missing out. So it's okay to miss out. You don't have to catch up with your friends to see where they go on a holiday, to where they go and eat. You know, now, you know, even my dad, now every time the food comes, he will take picture first. I say, Daddy, why do you want to do that? <laughs> I, I don't understand, but it's just a phenomenon that we see, right? Uh, even my, 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 my wife is guilty of that. So I will, you know, but personification, right? If you have retargeted, they use AI to look at like, like what, what you like, what is your profile, you know, and they retarget, um, they, they sell your profile. They want to retarget you for advertisements. I was just having this conversation with my colleague, right? This, I say that, you know, do, does my headphones, my phone, do they listen to my conversations? Because I was just talking about you know, um, looking for a lock smith because there's something wrong with my door. And the next moment, I see Google targeting me about, do you need a lock smith? I'm like, wow, that's scary. I didn't even Google search it. I didn't even look it up on YouTube, but yet it happens. I don't know whether you've had that before, but it happened to me. They talk about scarcity. They have social proof, reciprocity, non-closed loops. This is your Netflix, right? Every time you, you want to, it, the, the, you know, the, the episode will always end at the part where, oh, who is the third party, you know? When you open the door, it, the episode will end there and that will force you to watch the next episode. Then you binge watch, right? So that is all psychological hooks. Perpetually done to, for you to be clingy 
if you are using a free app, they will sell you advertisement. This is the 15 seconds, or rather the five seconds YouTube. Sometimes they have two YouTube videos. Sometimes they have a minute long that you cannot finish. So I subscribe to YouTube Premium. You see, they got my money. And again, 97, 94% of the students, they use their phone. It's, it's crazy, our relationship with technology. So this is the Maslow need of hierarchy, um, the new one, Wi-Fi and battery. This is nothing new. Uh, this is really old, but it gets me every time I see it because it's crazy. You don't even need food air. You know, I just need Wi-Fi and battery. So talk to my child about it. I got two boys, right? So this is happening. And, and really, the, the engineers, they want your app. So I, I want you to, the reason why I share all that is because I want you to rethink, rethink, really. You know, at the end of this thing, I told you, I, I promise you that I want to add value. And, the relationship that you have with your phone, right? Uh, the, the, some of the, the tips that I'm going to share with you is super radical. Uh, for me, I, I quit social media. I really try to minimize my social media. I turn off all my notification. Because why? When I want to write something, when I want to work on a project, I really want my focus to be there. And I turn off all the notification. I'm not asking you to turn off everything such as when an emergency comes, you can't even react to it. No. I'm talking about like, you know, ping, you have five go waiting for you in, in a game. Like, you know, you don't need that kind of notification. Emails for work, yes. Children asking you to buy them stuff for food, picking up of your children from school, yes. But any other notification, turn it down. Turn it off. You, you don't need that push notification. You don't need to see every email, see everything that your friends share on Facebook. You don't need that. All right, and, and Jomo, this is something, the joy of missing out, this is something that we need to rethink and re reframe. So again, these are the three things that we want to look at. And um, what, what I want to also talk about is, is the importance and the, and the understanding between a vision, power test, and an eye health exam. Because all this phone relates to our eyes. And I, and I say it once and again, vision is the most important asset. I don't even say it's the most important sense. It's not about the most important sense, oh, sight. No, it's really the most important asset. You can take away everything, everything that I have, but never take away my vision. Really, this is really what, what I mean by that. And, and I challenge you, you can, you can tell me something else that is more important than your vision, right? And there are so many eye conditions that is of an issue. Glaucoma, I talk about it, macular degeneration, diabetic retinopathy. Cataract, all these things are crazy. And, and again, if you don't take care of it, near work, power digital device drives up myopia. Myopia akin to diabetes, right? It's the mother of all eye conditions. I repeat, diabetes is a mother of all other chronic disease, right? Because it's a, cardi it's a cardiovascular issue. Your, your insulin level drops. There's a lot of bleeding internally in the body. Myopia, myopia, right? Short-sightedness. Okay, this, the problem that a lot of Singaporeans have is the mother of all other eye conditions because it brings up the risk and the fall of everything that is here. If you want my slides, if you take screenshots and everything, I'm happy, but I'm going to send it to you, right? I want the message to be out. Most important message of the night, 6-6 six, six doesn't mean your eyes are healthy. 6-6 six, six doesn't mean your eyes are healthy. So if you have any questions, you can start posting up. I only got four slides left. And again, what can we do, right? I promise you some tips. We talk about Preservative, right? Dry eyes, preservative, free eye drops, those in the, in the single dose, not the one in the bottle. So in the bottle, one, 60 days upon opening, you have to discard it. Don't put the eye drops inside the fridge thinking that it can last six months. It's not your fruit or vegetable, okay? So 60 days upon opening the bottle, once you have to throw them away. If best, use the unidos, the one that one time used, but you throw away, right? At the most, you keep it for 48 days, then you discard it. So that's a preservative free eye drops, right? Eye drops, they got two types. They got the, the liquid-based one and the oil-based one. So use the oil-based one if you have really severe dry eyes. For night use, the liquid-based ones every day. You can put it on for four to eight times a day. I don't care, right? Because it's preservative-free, right? There's no all but. There's no medicine in it. So these those guys are great. We talk about um, turning off all your notifications. It's a crazy thing to do, but really think about the kind of relationship. Delete away those apps, right? Quit social media if you can. Right? We don't need no social proof, social acceptance. How, how we evaluate ourselves is how we appreciate our life, spending time with your loved ones. Do you want to have two years of your life gone? I'm complaining that I don't have enough time to spend with my parents and yet I watch YouTube and I play my games. So 
you know, it, 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 I, I, I'm, I'm guilty of everything, right? I'm also work in progress. I'm not perfect. And, and, and I want to share whatever that I learn to, to, to as many people as I can. So one of it is another, is another tip I call 20-20-20. So every 20 minutes, okay, this is a very important, this formula, this 20-20-20 can save your life. Every 20 minutes, look 20 feet. 20 feet is about 6 meters, right? Just look far, 20 feet for 20 seconds. 20 seconds, that's all, right? 20 minutes, 20 feet, 20 seconds. It doesn't have to be 20. You know, I don't, I don't imagine you looking outside for two minutes. It doesn't make sense. No human being will like to stand out of the window for two minutes, right? And, and please get the units right. Uh, it's 20 minutes, 20 feet tall, not 20 cm looking at the phone. Uh, for 20 seconds. Not 20 seconds looking at your phone, then you look outside for 20 minutes while you work from home. Uh, the clocking of the hours is going to be bad, right? <laughs> and, and, and this is a simple, it doesn't, okay, the idea is micro break. Micro, it's just a small. Last time you used to have two or five minutes looking at the tree, like, come on, who would do that, right? 20 seconds. If you, if you are on the floor, right? If you, are, if you are working, if you are focusing, every 40 minutes set an alarm, right? Practical tip, set an alarm, 40 minutes. Every 40 minutes, you have a little chip chip sound. Make, don't make that, 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 that crazy loud sound that stuns everybody. Just a little reminder to say, okay, Ken Tong said, I must rest for 20 seconds. So 40 minutes, maybe you can rest for 40 seconds. Just looking up. 20 feet, just far away. Okay, 20, 20, 20. Very easy to remember. No phone one hour before bed. Come on, we can do that, right? You know, my, mom, my mentor challenged me, right? He said, no, are you doing what you are saying? And I, and I put up the test. I, I put my phone outside. So that you know, I'm not forced to use and blasting blue light into my eye, and and I and I adhere to that. You know, sometimes I'm still guilty. Sometimes you know, if I don't put my phone outside, I use it. I'm not perfect, but at least you know that the conscious effort. So if I don't, I will just you know the next morning I I I will I'll, I'll remind myself to do it. So this is very important. No phone one hour before sleep and nutrition, right? I'm going to cover that in a very short minute. And, and, and I think I want to sum it up with, with these two problems that I normally see, right? One is stress. Another one is rest. Um, I, I think a good 40 to 60% of people who have all this um, digital eye strain and asthenopia, it relates to stress and rest. When I talk about rest, I'm talking about the quality and the quantity of rest, right? If you watch Netflix till 2 a.m., you have to wake up at 7 a.m., five hours of sleep, that's not quality, quantity, that's not enough of a quantity. We need to have seven to nine hours. And the quality of sleep is not with all this blue light, right? There are even studies to show that, you know, the infrared, you know, now they don't want any, any white light or warm lights around. They want infrared lights, right? And, and that can help our body to go into a very nice momentum of, of rest, right? So that the, the circadian rhythm, the melanin, uh, melatonin, melatonin, yeah, can, can, can help to, you know, look at the, the correct sleep circadian cycle. This is important, right? So stress again, you know, a lot of times people come to me for headache and you know that 40 to 60% of the, 40% of the vision problem, all right, comes, 40% of the headache problem comes from vision. I repeat, 40% of the headache problem comes from vision. So visit our optometrist. Don't just take your Panadol. Look at how you can manage stress. You can, can you meditate? Can you have, can you take that 20, 20, 20 um, uh, formula? Take 20 seconds of break. All these are good. And, and I want to cover a bit about nutrition, uh, really. Um, we can look at routine, right? If you want to have, it's all about the oxidative stress of, of the cells, right? And uh, I was recommended by mentor to go to, to, to avoid meats. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm still working progress. You know, I take fish in here. But it's all about the oxidative stress of our body cells. And, and these are the things that we can possibly do. Like if you want to take care of macular degeneration, we can take more routine. Routine, right? Yeah, Huang Su. It's found in what? Goji zi. Your, your wolf berries. You know, if you go to a Chinese restaurant, you know, they'll put this, you know, goji zi, right? The wolf berries, the wolf berries. Yeah, all these are very, very high in routine. And, and that can take care of the macular degeneration, right? That's a problem when the doctors are, have to literally pass a syringe into the eye to do injection, right? That is macular degeneration. And, and every syringe, every injection is... 800 to $2,000, to two thousand dollars, right? Do you want to go through that? And again, remember the macular generation is the 41 times if your degree is 600 and above. So that is crazy. Omega-3, right? If you have dry eyes, take omega-3, right? It's, it's a highly anti-inflammatory. Um, 
it, 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 it's not pro-inflammatory, it's anti-inflammatory, so this can really help. And of course, if you have cataract, if you're afraid of cataract, I mentioned that cataract is an oxidation process. Take antioxidants, your, 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 blackberry, uh, your blackberries, your cherries that are dark in color, your blueberries, blueberries, all these are so rich. And you, you hear me, you didn't, you, I didn't talk about um, the, 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 the GNC pills. You know, I, I'm a fan of supplement, right? Don't get me wrong. But I believe all this whole food, right? Your broccoli, your kale, your corn, right? I, I, take, I take supplements as well, but I think the whole food, you know, Will, will, will really help you. And, and this is something that I, I want, you, want you all to take home with. Um, and, and, and it's very important. So I think in summary, um, there, there are some useful tips that I already talked about, like 20, 20, 20. I want you to be able to implement all these little things. Is it the eye drops? Is it more breaks? Is it um, turning on the blue light filter, right? There, there, are, there are things that are scattered around. Um, I, I'm going to send you a, a whole list of things that I'm going to, that I've spoken to you about today. Um, via email, right? If you have any questions, please, um, I would like to answer as much as I can. I've got another about 14 minutes and I've got some questions. If not, um, I would like to thank you for, for 